trial Imperial Hammer 08 took place in Sardinia from 29 September to 15 October. Hosted by Italy, over 1,300 personnel from 15 NATO nations and 12 NATO organizations were involved. Some 25 ground systems and 46 aircraft, as well as special operations forces, Navy and terrorist cell teams, TIH-08 represents CNAD's latest effort to improve the Alliance's joint ISR capabilities. So we have uh, a, a common target, uh, a common enemy, enemy and the right now is the terrorism. We need it all nations to be a part of it. Now, when you have a problem of time-sensitive uh, target, like counter-terrorism act, uh, insurgency, you have to be fast. And this uh, permits it, like we can do it right away. In the planning phase, I had uh, to face two major challenges. The first one was uh, to integrate in a seamless uh, net-centric environment uh, older systems and high-tech uh, demonstrators provided by the nations. The second objective uh, was to provide the nations with uh, uh, an environment able to um, uh, demonstrate and gather all the information elements to improve the longer-term transformation program. We act uh, on behalf of the NATO's Air Force Armaments Group uh, with the continuation of the successful Trial Hammer series. And we try to achieve uh, together with uh, our friends from the Italian host nation and all the other participants uh, to improve our interoperability uh, with NATO standards and we will give our recommendations uh, to uh, the highest NATO commands, a, that is ACT and ACO, to support directly the warfighter in the field. One of the main goals for Trial Imperial Hammer is the support to time-sensitive targeting with the means of the SIGINT, of the entire SIGINT RSR community. Numerous NATO agencies gathered in Sardinia with two major aims in order to improve NATO response and situational awareness. First, to demonstrate how the Alliance's ability to serve time-critical intelligence uh, contributes to NATO warfighter needs. Second, to test and explore new mechanisms and methods for rapid and sustained NATO uh, response in order to protect alliance forces and populations from terrorist attacks. Imperial Hammer staff created a modern threat scenario to improve procedures, processes and capabilities. In Sardinia, trial participants came together to test their ability to collect and share various forms of intelligence from different sources for the purpose of enabling TST. Establishing a net-centric environment, intelligence was disseminated via data links back to a KAOC for the purpose of analysis by a CWOC and the all-source fusion center who in turn supported a TST cell. What a time-sensitive target is, is a target that has uh, such strategic importance to the overall campaign that when that target uh, presents itself in any situation, we do our best uh, to try to uh, hit that target as quickly as possible. We receive that information from anyone from a troop on the ground with a radio all the way up to some sort of imagery from an unmanned aerial vehicle or from SIGINT or ELINT. What we do is we help verify that that target uh, is actually a time-sensitive target and then we have the ability to retask uh, aircraft who may be on another mission to go and to this new target that they did not know about before and hit that target. Let's meet some of the people that will support him in his mission to execute TST. We've got 14 different nations working in the uh, Signals Intelligence and Electronic Warfare Ops Center. Most of the people there have deployed to ISAF and deployed to Kosovo, as well as some national deployments. And we're using that experience to look at how NATO does signals intelligence analysis to support operations. Uh, we have some new tools, some national tools we're bringing for the very first time, and we're very excited about what we'll be able to do. Uh, we'll be able to increase the rapidity in which we do analysis and also the clarification of, of the analysis and get it to the targeting folks. We're also working with the All Source Fusion Center. Uh, we're looking at fusing SIGINT into the larger intelligence process during the trial. Navigation warfare, or NAVWAR, is electronic warfare applied against radio navigation signals or global positioning systems, such as the GPS. Jamming GPS signals is an emerging threat against what we call position navigation and timing as signals that our C3 systems depend upon. 
During Trial Imperial Hammer, we are measuring and locating GPS jammers as part of the time-sensitive targeting process. This is the first time that uh, we are participating in an uh, exercise uh, such important and complex uh, as the Imperial Hammer is. Right now we are using for the first time the new tactical one made uh, in Italy is uh, called Strix, uh, 6 kilograms uh, UAV and we can load the IR uh, sensor and uh, electro optical one with uh, zoom capability. Um, you can uh, see, follow and surveil a, a good portion of, uh, of area. You can uh, film the, the enemy and they cannot see and hear you. Uh, if you are uh, hidden on, uh, on the air, you can stay uh, as long as you can have uh, uh, a lot of information and you know if you have uh, uh, information you can uh, win the fight. There were other UAVs too at Trial Imperial Hammer. The Vector P and Maverick for example are able to integrate different sensors. These UAVs can undertake a number of different missions such as counter IED. There's, there's several uh, NATO standardized agreements that apply to UAVs. Uh, the two that are primarily in play for this trial are STANAG 4586, which is the interoperability STANAG, and 4609, which is the imagery interoperability. The 4586 interoperability offers us the opportunity to have a automated interoperability capability uh, between UAVs. Uh, the electronic warfare array can be used to detect the triggering signals for a UAV. Uh, the hyperspectral information is a very sophisticated imaging technique to detect where there have been changes uh, along a, road, a roadside where an IED has been placed. Modern uh, scenarios require that uh, information collected by SIGINT uh, assets flow quickly in order to have a positive effect to imminent threat warning, uh, time sensitive targeting and uh, EOB production. We came to Trail Empire Hammer 2008 to uh, help NATO to create a new concepts of the SESMO and the time sensitive targeting. We are helping them to create EOB and giving some update of the good radar signals. The concept to have uh, multiple collectors able to share uh, data in uh, real time can significantly help to reduce the time to obtain an accurate uh, geolocation. I'm in charge of the concepts of preparation for the SESMO. Uh, with the SESMO on the zero over ground calibration, you can see if you find the good location. SESMO means you, we share a line of bearing from different aircraft. Uh, we mix everything in the ICA aircraft and we find a location in near real time. Here uh, we are sitting on a Tornado ECR, which is an electronic warfare version of the Tornado. And uh, we have uh, the MIS included with a Link 16 for the network, which means that we can. Uh, uh, together with the emitter locator system, uh, locate uh, ground threats on the ground and uh, exchange this data among other air assets and with the command and control chain. We, have, we can now better locate uh, those targets and we can reduce uh, pretty much the, uh, the error we can uh, have with the bombs going down. And then uh, we can pass the information to the other assets to actually strike them uh, with uh, less casualties, hopefully. Our hope is and our objective is to use this trial in order to see how we're doing with the technology, how well it does for us, how we can support the trial objectives, therefore uh, enhance NATO operations, the concepts of operations and the work together in a joint com and combined environment. We all try to exchange data in order to uh, assist during the time-sensitive targeting process and to make that process shorter. Basically what that means is to close that chain from the sensor finding a signal or information to the shooter, meaning the platform actually targeting the target. It is a typical day in the South. People are walking around town and leisurely enjoying the outdoors. However, Red Forces in the North are planning an activity that will disrupt this calm. 
A NATO stabilization force is deployed in the Southern Territory in order to keep peace between the blue and red areas. Intelligence is reporting that red forces are planning a smuggling operation involving some unknown cargo. The location is somewhere on the eastern shore. The TST cell has decided to launch UAVs to acquire imagery of the area. This activity is not going unnoticed by the TST cell. GBAD are also known to be in the area. SIGINT aircraft are launched and are picking up a pop-up threat emitter on the ground. A SIGINT aircraft sends the threat data to AWACS. AWACS in turn relays this intelligence back to the TST cell and Seawalk. Seawalk analyzes the data and gives it to the TST cell. The TST cell chief decides to cross queue another UAV to take a look at the emitter. Meanwhile, the trucks from the seashore are being tracked to their final destination. More fighters are launched. Other GBAD are in the area too. In addition, the TST cell chief dynamically retasks other fighters to go to the threat area. Fighter and SIGINT aircraft are locking in on the threat emitter. A cooperative ESM operation, or SESMO, is being conducted to fuse and share data to cooperatively and rapidly geolocate the emitter. Intelligence reports that red trucks are heading for a storage area near a mountain village. UAVs continue to track them. Near the storage area, a meeting of terrorist leaders has been reported. Operators are detecting GPS jamming coming from the ground. Assisting the TST cell, a NAVWAR cell is analyzing its effects. Their analysis of GPS jamming will contribute to the TST cell by recommending a different weapon, a different ISR asset, or suggesting a different ingress for fighters. Ultimately, this can help the TST chief reduce collateral damage. The TST cell is now ready to make a decision. The TST cell chief now knows the exact location of the threats, and he has the means to address them. Because of modern technology, better tactics, training and procedures, and the sharing of intelligence, Trial Imperial Hammer is helping NATO warfighters to execute TST. The end result will be to reduce collateral damage and save lives. I'd like to thank uh, all the uh, NATO nations and uh, participants to Trial Imperial Hammer 08 for their commitment and their uh, operational uh, readiness. They made this trial possible and uh, full success. Trial Imperial Hammer 08, taking it to the limit one more time.